lecture on design of steel structures. In the last video, what we did was the types of conductions based on the force action, based on the force transport, and based on the force experienced by the conduction. Based on the force experienced by the conduction, there are three parts that is, shear conduction, tension conduction, then combined shear and tension conduction. From this, the shear conduction is very important. There are two types of shear conduction one is lap joint, other one is butt joint. That is what we are going to discuss today. After that, we will be going through what are the specifications involved and the coded provisions for connections and the terms involved while doing connections. So, we will start with shear connections. First one is lap joint or lap connection. The lap connection, as we see in the figure, there are two plates that should be connected. That is, one on top of the other. That is, two plates overlap each other. The problem in this type of connection is that the plates over one on the top and the bottom each is having a force experienced on it. These forces are not in the straight same line. They are in two different lines and the center of gravity of both the loads are in different planes. This creates an additional job for designing for couple or moment. So that is the disadvantages of lab connection. So the next type of connection is butt connection. In bun connection also, we have to join two plates. The bottom two plates we have to join. For that, we add an additional plate which is known as a cover plate. Which cover these two plates together and the connections are provided. Bolted or riveted connections are provided or even welded connection can also be provided. Right now, we are dealing with bolted connection. So, there is a codal provision saying that if the thickness of the bottom plate is T, then the cover plate thickness should be 1.5 times of T. Okay, the bottom plate is the thickness is T, the cover plate should be 1.5 times of T in case of a single cover version. This is a double bolted single cover version. There is only one cover here. If you look at this figure, there are two covers, one in the top and one in the bottom. In that scenario, if the T is the thickness of the plate connected, then the cover plate should be 1.25 times of thickness. The cover plate should be 1.25 times of thickness. We will look into the, all these things when we deal with the code book IS 800 2007 later on. So right now these are the two types of connections, lap connections and butt connections under shear type of connections. Because the force experienced here is shear. That is, load is applied like this. The force experienced by the connection of the bolt is shear. That is tangential force over here also and here. So, in double cover butt joint, the additional factor is that since the all these plates are arranged in the same line and the load is also acting in the same line, there is no couple or moment acting on it. So therefore, a double cover butt joint is free from couple or moment because the CG of the load and the plate and the whole connection is in the same line. So, there is no couple or moment acting on a double cover butt joint. Therefore, these are the two types of connections. So, now let us discuss about what are the different specifications involved in a normal bolted connections. We are discussing the specification of bolted connection with the help of a lap joint. We already seen a lap joint is one where two plates are kept one on top of the other or they overlap each other. So, in this case, there are two plates which is acted upon by a load and we are connected it with a couple of bolts. Okay? Then, what are the important terms that we should know? So, this is the plan of the same. This is the section view. This is the plan view. Then, if these are the bolts connected, then the first thing we have to understand is what is pitch. Pitch is the distance, that is the center to center distance between each and every bolt. That is, the center to center distance between these consecutive bolts is known as pitch, but not in this direction. If you have to measure in the direction of the load, that is, the pitch is the distance between two consecutive bolts in the direction of the load. That is, what is pitch? Pitch is the center to center distance between two consecutive bolt holes measured parallel to the bolt line or load. Just make sure that where is the load and the one measured parallel to the load is known as pitch. It is denoted by P. So, there is a maximum minimum value that is provided by the code. 
just we'll make sure that we know all this because all of these are used in the design or the problem that we are going to do. So P minimum is not less than 2.5 times of shank diameter. We already seen what's the bolt, what the end of a bolt, the shank diameter, and also the threaded area. So we know to do a bolt by M into D into L. The D is the shank diameter. That diameter of the bolt, if we know, then the minimum pitch should not be less than 2.5 times of shank diameter. You don't have to by heart all these. All these are provided inside the code itself, but you should know. That's why I'm discussing it right now. Okay, so there's a maximum value that is 12 times of P. That is, P is the thickness of the plate provided, or 16 times of P, or 200 mm of either compression or tension. Over here, there is tension is applied. If it is a compression, then it is the other piece. So, these are the maximum minimum value for a pitch. So, what's a pitch? Pitch is the centimeter distance between two consecutive bolts in the direction of the load. Okay? So, that is pitch. What's the next one? Next one is gauge. Gauge is in the opposite direction of pitch. Right? Gauge is in perpendicular direction to pitch. That's the distance, centimeter distance between bolt poles. Whatever I have drawn here are the bolt poles, not the bolt itself. Okay? So the bolt holds so that we can understand where the center is. Okay, you are always designed using the bolt holes, not the bolt. Bolt fits inside the bolt hole. So first we have to put the bolt holes in a plate, then we have to keep the bolt in it. So for design purposes, we are taking center of the bolt hole always, not the bolt. So center of a bolt to another consecutive bolt, but perpendicular direction of the load is known as gauge distance or gauge denoted by small g. Okay, the next one is end distance and edge distance. What is end distance? End distance is the distance of the bolt to the end of a plate. This end is noted by the this upper plate. The upper plate ends here. So distance of this bolt hole to the end of this plate is known as what? End distance. It's noted by small g. So we also have to see that this end distance is measured where the same line as the load is acting. The load is acting in the same line as the end distance. End distance is measured in the same direction as the load is acting. End distance, as we uh, mentioned about pitch and gauge, end distance is acting in the opposite direction that is perpendicular to the load action. So this is end distance and end distance. This is the end distance and end distance we can't see in the sectional view. We can see in the plan this is the end distance. This is the end distance. So these are the basic important terms that are involved. Also, what is the length of connection? It's very important. Uh, denoted by capital L or capital L is suffix C sometimes. It varies based on the textbooks and all. Or based on the code sometimes it's capital L C. That's what we use. So that's why I didn't mention here. The length of a connection is the distance between the outermost bolt, bolt holes. Centimeter and distance between the outermost bolt holes is known as what? The length of connection. This is the outermost bolt. These two. So that's the length of connection. There's one more term we have to understand that is diagonal pitch. The pitch distance in the diagonal direction between two bolts is known as diagonal pitch. That actually, we don't use diagonal pitch much except for in a staggered connection. So, what is a staggered connection? These are the two types of connections that we have to provide. This is a staggered because this is a wayward kind of connection. And this is a diamond. This is the most efficient kind of connection. Okay. Uh, why efficient? We will see in another video. Okay. There are two types of connection staggered or diamond connection. And uh, in standard connection, we know all are diagonally connected, right? In this case, we have to use this diagonal pitch. But in diamond connection also, we have to sometimes use diamond. This diagonal pitch we have to use before finding uh, the values for design. So another important factor we have to understand is what is the diameter of the bolt hole we have to provide if we know the type of bolt or the size of bolt we have. So uh, we, before designing, what we have is an M8 or 8 mm shank diameter bolt. That's what we have. So what I have to do is we have to find out what the size of the bolt hole we have to provide. I know the bolt hole should be greater than the size of the bolt, right? So, so that it can easily fit in. So we have to add something to the bolt diameter. So the bolt diameter, if it is known to be small d, then the bolt hole diameter d naught is given by d plus 1 or d plus 2 or d plus 3 mm based on the variation or the size of the bolt. Bolt shank diameter is between 12 mm and 14 mm, then we can provide 1 mm. Or 16 mm, 24 mm is 2 mm. Or if it's greater than 24 mm shank diameter, then we can provide 3 mm. So, what I said was 8 mm bolt, right? It is not here. 
whatever is below 12 we have to add 1 and 0 okay whatever is below 12 we have to add 1 and 1 we don't have to by heart this thing also add this stuff because it is given in page number 73 and table 19 in ISH 100 So that is all for today. I uh, hope you understand that what are the different types of shear connections that is lap joint and butt joint and what are the different specifications of ported connections that we are using during a design.